everybody, my name is Metal Music Man. And I'm Professor Lex. And this is episode I didn't check of the Metal Fuck. Lex podcast. Fuck. Fuck. I think it's episode 37? 37. Um, and uh, Waiting in the Wings. Let me make sure I'm right. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's 30, 37. 37 we of the Metal Lex never podcast. Lie to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Woo. We do have a special guest for you. It's A2. Say hi, A2. Hey, what's going on, A2? <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good. <laughs> good job, buddy. Is that very awesome? genuine. No, no, it is what you, you were following directions. You were just following yeah, orders. It's okay. He, You've never. <laughs> he's very, he's very nervous. Don't. Uh, Dude, I was, I was, fielding, I was fielding questions from him uh, up until the, the wee hours of the morning last night. Oh, for uh, real? Going over. No. Oh, okay. uh, this is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you had me. I was like, I didn't do shit. I just played World of Warcraft till the wee hours of the night. You managed um, to play WoW? We have a whole right. plan laid out, and we didn't tell you about it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm so. They, you're gonna feel so left out during the musical number. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I actually, I wouldn't even be mad if you guys had a whole musical number for me. We don't. I don't even don't know. Don't get what, too excited. What does A2 singing even sound like in my inner brain? I don't even know. My he, brain. He can process strikes that. me as he strikes me as a baritone. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful. Were oh, you in, were you good. in a choir as as a young boy? Were you ever a young boy? A two. Uh, at one point in the forties, I was a young boy. Yeah. <laughs> you used to play those early forties. Were you really good at kick the can? And you had like all the weird kick the can <laughs> angles that no <laughs> you, one else. I did. You could you like stick that, the yeah. can to the ledge, and so no one else could get it. It was really obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> Okay, uh, everything exploded. Uh, we kicked the can angles. We kicked the can angles. Hopefully, everyone heard that. And depression era jokes. Depression yeah. era jokes. We decided that the depression was in 1930 ish, 1929, 29 to 32. Yeah, yeah, something like that. There's and, no way to know uh, for sure. Is correct. Yeah. No yeah. way. Not possible. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I don't know what happened. It was really weird. But here we are again, and we were talking about A2's tier list. Uh, and so A2 made a tier list on Twitter. And he was saying uh, that it the meme is in the eye of the beholder is what he said. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is so much more eloquent than we could have put it previously. <clears throat> so anyway, I wanted you to determine your own level of meme. And these are these are your real thoughts, as you said, and that you you tried to uh, think about Japanese thoughts versus American thoughts, and yeah, and how some how some characters seem to be a little better in their hands, and then also, like I said, some like potential potential of the character, which you know may or may not may or may not be real. Yeah, um, I noticed you had Pokemon Trainer and S. I don't know if I agree with that or I not. Do, right? I do. Uh, so and Shulk. Shulk is controversial to me. I don't think Shulk's yeah, that controversial. Shulk is, too. is he? Doesn't it, almost everyone agree that Shulk has the most like unrealized? No, there's a lot of people. A lot of people think that like, oh, if you just parry, then he has nothing. Or I, I, I don't hmm. know. I, I think a lot of people hold him a little bit lower than. Me. Interesting. Yeah, I, I do think Pokemon Trainer, and I, I kind of thought that since the beginning. I mean. I, so if why do you think they're can S? switch between really fast and lots of combos to like big heavy that can hit you with back air at you know ten percent you die. I mean you know so I I don't know like that's, that's the versatility. So much I feel like yeah. I think that I definitely makes them an amazing character. I just don't feel like they have enough to be S because like I think that makes them like a definitively a high tier character. I would never argue that, but I feel like S is like if I look at Joker or Palatina or Peach or whatever, <laughs> like they don't yeah. have. In my opinion, that level of bullshit. Weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not, it's not that they don't have weaknesses. It's that they don't have weaknesses and they have like utter bullshit. I feel like Pokemon Trainer just doesn't have weaknesses. Like, what's the most so bullshit thing much, Pokemon Trainer has, in your opinion? How much do you think the the Ivysaur nerfs like how, you know hurt? Like, because uh, some people just completely drop the character from that, and I, I don't think I think it was a slap on the wrist. I, I think, think that's an that yeah. No, I agree with you there. I think that's an over exaggeration. I think people have well. Okay, I think the reason that people are leaving Pokemon Trainer is because they have been like very slightly, slightly nerfed over time. You know, like there the recent yeah. nerfs weren't even the only ones. If memory serves, wasn't there like an initial nerf to Ivysaur like really, really early in addition to like the more recent shit? Or am I making that up? I feel like there've been a couple nerfs. But uh, I, I don't remember. I could be crazy. Anyway, point being, no, no, no. There definitely was. There definitely was another Ivysaur nerf at some point because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because early on, early on, I used to never be able to down B through Ivysaur side B as Ganon. I couldn't ever wizard foot through it ever. And then they eventually changed it to where if I'm close enough, I can. So I, okay. I know they like nerfed the damage that it did, which is why the clank interaction is different anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think they're super freaking good. I just don't, I don't feel like S is like 
just a character that has no weaknesses. Does that make sense? That's my view sure, of sure, an sure. S tier character. Um, yeah. you, you're talking, you're, you're using the classical sense where an S tier character is really just a step above the rest of the cast in that they are the S tier where everyone else is A or worse. Yeah, like if they're the only character in the game, like, okay, let, sure. me, let, me use, let me use another character as an example. This is not one that you put up there. And I actually will say, I, I picked the one thing in your S tier that I don't agree with like they're every i agree with pretty much everything else, else seems pretty especially spot on. joker being it'd the be first little, best it'd be a little boring to pick like all the things you did agree with <laughs> yeah, let me let good. me go through i actually agree but with a lot of it is, is what i was trying to say there <laughs> in my very positive sounding way i actually agree with a lot of what you have but like i i don't understand lists that don't have jokers number one i can't i i'm but sorry they, yeah. what world what yeah, world are you living in like it's yeah. not it's not ordered within tiers, so if we're looking Correct. at, at yeah. the tier oh, list... Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I, I saw that yeah. at the top now. Okay. Do, yeah, do, you, yeah. do you care about who's number one, or do you think they're all close enough that it doesn't matter? I, I was just doing this as, like, I, I don't know that anybody, especially when you have 20 characters in one tier sometimes, or 15 characters, I don't know that you can really place them. So I wasn't going to even mess with order. I just thought sure. there's, like, a, a distinct difference between all these different groups. But, yeah, I, I do think... I've I've thought Joker's number one for like a long time now. <clears throat> I know Pikachu is like way up there for lots of people, which he kind of is for me too. But I, I don't know. Joker I can never seems... decide on Pikachu. Pikachu, Pikachu. Go Arsene got nerfed, and if it got nerfed again, he you could maybe argue that he would drop down a little bit. But he's, Arsene is out forever. I, forever I think Joker ever, is ever. the only character in the game that still <laughs> deserves to be and has deserved to be gutted. <laughs> I am not. You don't want him to be good or fun. I'm not hyperbolizing. No, I wouldn't say that, Alex. But I do think he deserves to be gutted. I think the the shit Joker has, like people talk that way about like Pikachu or Peach sometimes, but like Peach is way harder, way more like initially yeah, specific like, with her lab. She has some bullshit. Joker has hard shit too, but it's not the degree of Peach's shit. A and B. Yeah. Joker also has just some really dumb shit. Like there are numerous characters that literally can't fight joker just because of arson downby like k roll yeah, like that is so like i i actually think other than snake nikita like mm -hmm. joker probably has the most things in this game that i would definitely delete i think still the number one thing in this game i would just delete snake nikita it is the most unnecessary <laughs> polarizing matchup killing move that it doesn't do anything for the matchups where he wins hardly right or the matchups where he's even it's, it doesn't really help him that much, and then it just shits on characters that he already beats. Yeah. Um, Arsene Downby is the same kind of bullshit. You know what I mean? Like he can just parry like Little Mac or K. Rule or whoever the fuck. Like, and you just you just throw the parry out. They yeah. can't fucking do anything. Like any any recovery, and then they're dead. Yeah, yeah. They mm -hmm. just can't do anything. They just can't recover. They're dead. And it's like if you if you've ever think... seen him do that to K. Rule, where he gets like ten in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? You think something? <laughs> oh, with uh, with respect to Nikita, like I I think if you if you made it so that you could control it or the control was a little like looser. You couldn't like, cause right now you can like loop around somebody's foot like eight yep. times. You know what I mean? You can do whatever you want with it. Very I think slight. if it had a little less uh, maneuverability, right? a little less agility, it would be, it would be much better. For oh, I think it should be gutted. I think it should move at half the speed that it moves. It should deal half the damage that it does. And it should have three times the recovery that it has. I will also say sometimes with DDD, I'll, I'll attempt to forward air it and I will hit it and it dies, and then it falls with me and hits me again anyway. Yeah, and that's it, it, crap. Right? It, should, like, <laughs> it should be worthless. The, the, the way that move is designed, yeah. there are moves... I'll, I'll do a, a quick parallel to uh, World of Warcraft because I know everyone loves that so much, but sometimes mm. there, are, there are things that people but. think are interesting, right? And they get rid of them. There's this mechanic where this one class has a move where every 10 seconds they do a big area of effect attack. They attack everyone around them, and everyone, and everyone was like, oh, this is a neat move because when you first start that attack, you have a 100% chance to dodge anything. What a cool mechanic... That makes me feel like this class. It's a demon hunter. They're quick. They're agile. They're like, I, every time I do my attack, I can dodge. But the problem is that design is fucked because it's either going to be shit worthless where the dodge chance isn't high enough and it's just like random and therefore it's not useful or reliable and bad. Or it's how it used to be, which is that every time you do it, you always dodge everything. Well, that's horseshit because then there's all these mechanics in WoW where you're supposed to be like, Hey everybody, watch out for this thing. Everyone's got to like rotate and get hit by it. And then the demon hunter's like, "Oh no, I'll just do my weird dodge thing." <laughs> and, and then I'll literally do the mechanic for everyone in my group. I'll just go around in a rotation and do it for everyone because I can dodge every time. So then they were like, "Well, what if it only dodges sometimes?" Like there's just no way to balance that kind of move. And to me, Nikita is one of those moves where there are sometimes moves that and I think people get really like whenever you say something like that or when I say something like that, people they get really like uh shy. They're like, oh, "I don't know. It sounds like you're just 
being angry because you think the move should be destroyed. And it's like, well, sometimes that is the only answer, though. Like, and to me, Nikita is just a bad move because it's like Ganon there's up no to no way to make it fair to you. Oh, yeah, there's oh. no way to make it good. Well, Ganon up to it's the same kind of move. Can you imagine if yeah. they made it quick enough or something that it was ever any good? Like, <laughs> like can you imagine? that would be pretty dumb. <laughs> can you imagine? Up till when when we went to from four to to ultimate, I was like super excited because I was so I was a Ganon and DP main at four, mm. and I played probably pretty even split, maybe even more Ganon. So I played him like all the time. His up tilt was frame like eighty four in <laughs> four in Smash Four, I think. I, and I'm not. That's not. I think it really was eighty four. Yeah, but it hit so far below the ledge, and the hitbox was gigantic that I was getting people with that in tournament matches, like decent people too, not like just though round one and you don't know this person. They never but show up. They'd mm. have to have an extremely like, linear recovery, right? You, or yeah, not expected, do, or, or, or like a mix up. You you kind of like go off low and you force them high, and then now they're coming down and they they don't have another jump. They don't mm-hmm. have anything, you know, something like that. But I was I was able to do it. I was able to two frame people with it, which that's a little bit of kind of guessing, obviously, which frame eighty four. But that's a lot of guessing. Again, like a, a linear recovery, is, <laughs> you could you could kind of do it. And I was like, I saw the the notes, and I was like, it is twenty frames faster in ultimate. I, I am a Ganon main for life. This is the best thing on the planet. I'm going to hit so many people with up tilt. And then it's like the hitbox is terrible now. It's really small. It doesn't hit below ledge. It doesn't kill. I, it's so, I mean, it obviously it kills, but it doesn't kill super Oh, early. it kills kill earlier with like almost any. Yeah, no, it, it has horrible kill power. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying coming from how it was, but I still think even in that game, it's an awful move, to be honest, because like it, the, it is. The, the problem <laughs> is it has so much overlap, right? Like there's never a time where you'd want to use it that Warlock Punch you wouldn't, wouldn't be better. Than, yeah. I mean, every time I get it in tournament, well, it's, it's an accident. At the ledge was the only, with people off stage. That was because the of the two frame in, in Smash 4. I mean, yeah, yeah. I get and, that. And how the foot hung a little bit lower. The, the <laughs> foot box was <laughs> just off. Foot box. I just, I just yeah. feel like you could buff his D-tilt to be a better two frame, and that would be a much yeah. more practical thing, because the, at the end of the day, I don't care. You could tell me you did it five times a tournament, and I just wouldn't believe it was still yeah. good because the problem is like it you're hitting a two frame window with an 85 frame move there yeah. there i don't care how many times you hit people and condition them like that's still there's still like <laughs> a very large rng element to it i mean there just is an rng element with two framing regardless right like there's yeah, an rng or, element with two framing with a quick move so or he's just yeah, a genius oh i'm sure he is i'm not saying yeah yeah i'm not saying it was like just a complete slot machine but there there's still more of a random element to it than I absolutely. think is healthy, yeah, yeah, is absolutely. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, it's, not a, it's not a good move. It's still not a good move. And huh. they would have to change it like, considerably to be a good move. Yeah. So anyway, back on the Joker train, that is how I feel about a couple of Joker's moves. Um, I think guns still probably need to be gutted. Um, like I the, wish guns were better. The, the guns, guns are so believe, fucking cool. He I already has... How guns were. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. I mean, down guns especially, right, is what got gutted. But yeah. I, I'm talking about oh. gun dash. Like... And on the one hand, oh. it is really cool to gun dash. It's really cool to always yeah. dodge the thing with the WoW character I was talking about. It is cool, but it's it doesn't You're have a place. It's, it's it's not. <laughs> I don't think I am. You don't, you don't believe in having a good time. You're uh, okay. Uh, I would believe in that if Amish? if more if more characters Smashed had Amish. something like that. It, the, my problem is like that there aren't enough characters that have anything remotely similar to that. I don't think every character needs to be a homogenous whatever. But Joker, sure. the problem with Joker to me is that he isn't. He's not a weird enough like a Bayonetta where it's like excusable. You're like, why does well, Bayonetta get, it. why does she get bats within? You're like, well, she's fucking, she's, she's fucking weird. She's got a bunch yeah. of weird shit. She's not good at like normal smash things. So mm-hmm. she gets to be different, right? Like, like, like yeah. Bowser Jr. Joker is oh, yeah, not Bowser Jr. Character. though. Joker is like yeah. a space animal with also a bunch of weird <laughs> fucking arson. shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so that's always been my problem with him. Um, but yeah, no, I like having Zero Suit Samus and S going back to your list. So I think Zero Suit Samus is really underrated, um, especially defensively. Like, nobody ever fucking I, talks about. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand Flip why. Is broken. It's it, so it busted. Is like an absolutely disgusting move. And, and it works for everything. It really does. Like, I know there's always that meme, like, oh, you know, use this for everything. You, you really do, though. Here's Even, like, the slightest bit is that the disadvantage, like against DDD, you do that. And how am I going to catch you? I cannot. So I'm like, yeah, back and forth and back and forth across the stage. And if I even get remotely close to you, you flip kick away. Yeah. The flip then, kick is the side B or whatever that lets you do the aerial. Okay. Yeah. Down the, B? The, she jumps in the air. She flips in the air. And okay. It, it can what's spike. the side, what's B's, your side B? Side B is the, the orange ball line move. Is okay. 
Okay. <laughs> not not the not the charge gun, but the, the whip, not a grapple the thing. Whip, yeah. The, okay. yeah, the whip thing. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, what you can do against against <laughs> her line. is like you can obviously like corner zone them, right? Like you can push the zero suit Samus to the edge, and then basically bait the flip kick. But the the problem yeah. is, and I think that's more doable than a lot of people give credit for. But I also still think it's so much slighted in the zero suit Samus's favor in so many matchups that like I don't know how she's not S tier on more people's mm-hmm. lists. Yeah. Like it's baffling. You know what, to me. I- I try to bait that out, and then I've got multiple jumps, so I jump up as high as I can and up air like blindly, hoping they flip kick right into it. And they do sometimes, but mm-hmm. it's so fast. It's not. I, there's nothing I can really do about it. Ah, everything crashed again. My computer is dying. It's time to format. Uh, but flip kick, flip, which is called flip jump. A two just told me. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's apparently called flip jump, which I hate also. But uh, it does have a kick at the end. So it's yes. flip jump, comma kick. <sighs> flip jump, comma kick. Makes sense. Uh, yes, I, I apologize profusely, dear listeners, for the choppiness of this. But Lex is now recording in addition to me. So that if my shit explodes again... At Ideally, least, mine is still there. <laughs> at, least, at least we'll have a file. I don't know what's going on, but I will be formatting this evening <laughs> as soon as we finish this podcast this was, god never intended you to have a guest on the I, oh no yeah, yeah i think not dude, dude we've been putting it off and putting it off and now that we're yeah. finally doing it god's like nah man yeah, i never liked that guy anyway he's a fucking asshole <laughs> um, so you're talking about god or is, are you pretending to be god talking about us oh man yeah uh, f- yes. yeah we'll go with yes i agree with you too okay, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was some tier list discussion. I think we'll just move on <laughs> because <laughs> because we already had two interruptions. And uh, it breaks it breaks the recording when we talk about tier list. It My doesn't like the tier list. It, yeah, yeah, maybe so bad. the, the so world bad. just didn't want the tier list to happen. Let's uh, let's talk about a two resin for a minute. Where you yeah, definitely yeah. don't make dildos. What do you uh, what do you do got, there? Yeah, he's got his uh, his don't company. Do that. <laughs> uh, a two resin in the sun. No, I, yeah. I, see, I told you I had, no one was going to get that really, fucking joke. <laughs> I had a whole bunch of really corny names picked out. I, I couldn't figure out what I wanted the company to be, and then everybody was just like, "Just call it O2, just call it O2." And I was like, "All right, whatever." Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, right. it is lame. It's better than any should like, be. <laughs> yeah, it was way more stressful than I wanted it to be. Trying to it's like, oh, I don't want to be just buttons in case I make something other than tell those amount. Yeah, yeah. But in case I make like controllers or something else or ornaments or something or what i i didn't want to i didn't want to be just one thing but you want it to be, be generic right like you you right. want it and that's what, yeah yeah um yeah i think if it's generic enough that's good and plus like it's probably not worth it to take the time to you know try and think of this really specific name if it's taking so long that it hinders you from actually starting the, yeah. <laughs> the project <laughs> i also wanted something that i could steal on like facebook instagram twitter or whatever you know just take the mm-hmm. whole take the whole gamut because i you know there's apparently my last name which i don't think is very common is like used and people have used that elsewhere and i was like i just i don't i want something that i can like can steal all of the so that i'm not like oh i'm uh andrew something on here and a2 this on this platform but all the same thing yeah you need you need to be unified that's actually unified one of the, that's one of the things that annoys me the most about like this new generation of fighting game social media like all the youngsters mm-hmm. They have like a tag in the Discord and a tag on Twitter, and then they've got a different handle in game, and like, or they have like three different Twitters for some reason, and like none of them are only fans. So I don't know why they have like three of them. It's very, con- <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't understand why like these freaking like these these like college this new college generation, they're like whatever twenty year old, and they just have like forty seven thousand different tags. I don't get it. Like I can't, I I barely care about the fact that you exist to begin with. And then, like, if if we're going to hang out and play this game, and then you're like, oh, yeah, follow me over here, and your name is, like, Bob on one thing and Super Sephiroth Butthole Mancer 92 on another thing, I'm just going to forget you answer. exist, and I'll never speak to you. Yeah, you don't know about, but, you know about Butthole Mancer? About kids? Are we comp- old people already complaining about kids? Because I joined, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll just be old and talk about the, the young whippersnappers. <laughs> I'm old damn, now. Damn children. <laughs> Alex, you're still a baby. What are you now, 27? 30 fuck out of here what Come are on, you man. 14 you know I'm... you know you <laughs> no. did just turned 30 like a couple <laughs> episodes ago 30. i'm officially old now yeah my memory's you not what it used to be like on the podcast 
I did the, the day did. of. You did. I remember, I remember no things because I'm so old. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, A2, I want you to know that um, I was playing Smash with Pharaoh, and he asked me how old you were, and I said 47, and then he just <laughs> he just believed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go, he's 47, he goes, damn. And the, like, he was like totally, he totally <laughs> believed me, and like if I hadn't corrected it, he would have just accepted that and moved True on with day. his life. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty great. But anyway, yeah, so I keep, a, a two I keep buttons. hitting that point though, where I was like, by the time that all the updates are done for Smash Ultimate, which is what the end of twenty twenty one, right? It's like December or something, twenty twenty one. Sure. It's like, do I really want to be attending tournaments? Like getting closer and closer to forty. Like, what do I? <laughs> oh, I'll be there with no shame, bro. <laughs> you should be, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have no shame. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I, I'll be. I'm not even kidding, dude. I'll be like fucking <laughs> seventy two years old. I'll be like, what's up, kids? Back in my day, <laughs> we played Street Fighter Four, and everyone <laughs> liked it. <laughs> Let me teach you about edge guarding. They re- <laughs> they removed the blast zones in the newest version of Smash Brothers because the noobs complained that they didn't like dying off the side. Like when I when I played this game, you had to grab the ledge. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna be that bad. You know they're just gonna keep making it easier and easier. I think it isn't. Oh, didn't Sakurai yeah, say he was done? He isn't said that. I don't believe any of it. Isn't He's, this the end I of don't Smash? Either. Okay. I don't believe that. It, it's, this franchise like prints money, which I don't. Yes. Oh, yeah. Again, if we want to go off on tangents, I don't know why they aren't taking alts and skins and whatever's for like a dollar a piece, and people would pay out the nose for those. I don't know why they're not. Sure. Why aren't they buying but, Slippy and re-releasing Melee well, well, on every console instead of going out of their way? To, to good choices. They're so stupid. Oh God, what a great See, transition into how they, much Nintendo is dumb. Yeah, that is the thing talk to about talk the hashtag, about. Like free Melee. Yeah. I. I I don't know. I get Nintendo's stance on it though, right? Because it's these are not legitimate. Oh, hold on, hold on, game. hold on. Let me, yeah, let me, let me give a, let me give a recap of what's going on before we yeah, dive yeah, into yeah, it so sure. people know. So, uh, sure. the long, long story yeah. short, there's a tournament called the Big House. Uh, COVID exists, and so people yeah. can't see each other in person, so they go to play online. Melee is a 20 year old video game for the Nintendo GameCube that is not only very hard to find. If you can find it, the game itself is like 100 or 150 dollars. The GameCube is who knows how much because those are hard to find. Um, so it's very hard to find, and then in addition to that, because it's so old, there is no online play. So the only way to play it online is to play it via an emulator, and this dude made this amazing emulator that not only lets you play it online, but has, like, rollback netcode and, like, even better net play than, like, most modern AAA title fighting games. Was, wasn't that Dan Salvato, the guy who did Doki Doki Literature Club? Didn't I, I find that out? I have no it, idea. Keep talking. Know of this. Keep talking. Uh, but anyway, that, that's the gist of it. So then <laughs> they did this, and they're going to have this tournament, and then Nintendo was like, hey, what the fuck are you guys doing? Fucking suck our butts. We're fucking Nintendo. How dare you? And uh, <laughs> so then the whole thing's canceled, and that's pretty much where we're at. So anyway, A2 is saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I guess they, well, I guess they reached out to the big house and said, hey, you know, please don't reached do out. And no, that you know, well, yeah, it's yeah, cease and desist. That <laughs> That's no, not no, really no, no, reaching the, before the oh. before the cease and desist. They yeah, did they say reach that, out yeah, before yeah. that. I yeah. did not know that. But then eventually, I you know submitted a cease and desist or whatever. So what I was saying is, that I I don't since you can't really buy the game new, you can't buy it on Switch, you know, online or something, whatever. You can't do yeah. any of that. I, I guess with like with ROMs and whatever, you can technically like download it yourself or strip it off the disc yourself and keep that but you can't disperse that and you can't take that from someone else right so but nobody's doing that. nobody's ripping that disc over and over again they're just sharing the iso so mm-hmm. I, I get where they're coming from this is a it's a pirated version of their game that, that somebody also then hacked and you don't want that they're not making any money off of that and if somebody sees it and goes oh that's really cool plus the online was really smooth and everybody talks about how amazing slippy is you're just encouraging more people to download that pirated software so but, like but see then why like, i don't understand yeah. why they don't i don't understand i i get it to a point but i don't understand a the, the game is so old right like yeah they're, yeah, the, they're not losing any money and then the, and, and, and them encouraging it could only be like publicity for the game there is no hmm. There's no dollar loss because no, literally no one is buying that game. It's the a 20-year-old game is, on a dead console. The thought is that they're trying to reserve the right to, in the future, publish a hypothetical Melee HD with online capabilities. But they're not. If, they're not going to do that thing. But if they were going... They're, they're keeping the, the option open, is, right. is the legal standpoint. Now, as I understand this, and as I have read many tweets uh, from uh, lawyers on the internet... They could just say, this is okay, we approve of the big house, and would suffer nothing 
as a consequence. Yep. There's no drawback. There's not a second clause to that statement. They, yeah. If they wanted to, they could just not be assholes about Th- it. That's what I mean. Like, I, I don't think anybody, and in fact, what I hate the most about this conversation in the Twitterverse is the fucking, like, fucking hipster fucking baby's first Twitter account, like, super, <laughs> super fucking egg Russian users. Bots. Where they come in and they're and they're like, well, you know, just so you know, Nintendo is completely within their rights legally, blah blah blah. Dude, nobody, yeah, we know. nobody with <laughs> half a brain doesn't know that you fucking assholes. If you are saying on a Twitter, just just do me a favor and step away from your computer and just fuck yourself in the face, because I don't <laughs> I don't understand. Like, like, do you? It's like, oh my god, dude! It's like whenever you have a conversation with someone about politics and they're like. Did you know that a a thriving fucking socialist communist thing existed in Russia for one month in 18 whatever? And it's just like, everybody's read that Wikipedia article. Shut the fuck up. You're not smart. Like, we're not talking about, we're not talking about that. Like, we're talking about the fact that, like, I I think, because I I don't think you would hear people having this argument if this was happening with Ultimate. I think everyone would understand, right? Like, as much as you may or may not like Nintendo, or, or much maybe you love Nintendo, sucks. maybe you hate them, maybe the netcode sucks. I think everyone understands understand there's a difference between like a product that they have put out, they're losing money, and that and just isn't Melee. There is no... I, I think somebody needs to get numbers on it, but I would love to know what the, the, the sales numbers have been for Melee in the last five years. Zero? I mean, they're, Because they haven't yes, produced yes, the like game. They're not producing. Yeah, that, 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 that's so what I mean. Zero, like, yeah. So th- there's no way they could possibly be losing out any income, and so that... That is what everyone is talking about. They're talking about the fact you, that Nintendo is going out of their way for this thing that doesn't hurt them. It, you could argue that uh, every copy of Melee uh, that is played is one copy of Ultimate that isn't bought. No one would believe you, and it's a bad argument, a but that's argument. not going to stop people from making it on Twitter. But yeah. It, it is also, like, a, a, to devil's advocate, I guess, it, it is also encouraging people to pirate software and to look into the tools that would let them pirate other games that they are producing right i mean so i think it's all you could you could stretch it a little bit but yeah i think that's a pretty big stretch we're a big we're a big game company that's pirating our software we don't want that anymore and what they should be they should obviously be engaging a little more like they haven't supported tournaments for the longest time in pretty much any of these games they tried to and, shut down well, no, no one no one is doing yeah, this right. like i mean yeah exactly this is the that this is the exact stupid mentality they had with evo where they're like mm-hmm. what the fuck you're going to stream our game we can't have this they're they're so stupid and like the problem is not like it, the reason this is happening with melee is not because everybody hates nintendo the reason it's happening with melee is because nintendo hates everyone so, like, yeah. as much as you hate, like, Street Fighter V, you know, or whatever, like, Capcom does, like, support the game. I can disagree with Street Fighter V's the design philosophy and the direction of it and blah, 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 but that's a totally different thing. As much as I hate what Capcom has done in that regard, you can't really knock them for the way they've supported it. And I'm not saying they're angels and they've always done everything great. They could certainly do a better job, but no one does as actively detrimental of of a job <laughs> like like as nintendo, as nintendo. They, they go out of the way yeah. to fuck you because nintendo isn't making this game and we have asked and the yeah. need has been clearly shown i think if you had any other game if you oh my god if there was remotely the kind of resurgence that melee had for street fighter 4 or 2 mm-hmm. or whatever well, well fuck fuck me in the ass it, there was for 2 Everyone was freaking out about and, two, and, and Capcom was yeah. like, "Hey, let's re-release this game yeah, on HP modern Linux. consoles yeah. because it would be really easy for us to do that, you know." And then they did the Street Fighter it's collection after that. They've re-released Street yeah. Fighter two several times. Why doesn't Nintendo just do that? Like that—that's the part that I can't. No matter what anyone says about the legal yeah. rights or whatever, that's the part I can't get around because it would be so much easier for Nintendo to do that than to like then have the, this yeah. weird legal crusade of bad PR, like. I just don't get it. And clearly well, it's not, not that hard to do. The dude, the dude did slippy by himself in fucking six months. One dude. Yeah. And then, the, well, you've got like what Sonic mania wasn't Sonic, right? That was like an independent person. And then like, so well, yeah. reached out and like, yeah, and they so, said, I mean, hey. I, I do think they you could, could be doing, you could shit on the ground and, and accidentally crap on a company that handles public relations better than Nintendo. <laughs> like it, they're so like, there's bad. And then there's like, whatever they do, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, yeah. I don't understand it at all. It, it's weird because it definitely leaves a lot of money on the table, like you said, right? I mean, I, I don't know. 
it, pretty much everybody in the in the St. Louis Smash community, as far as I know, would buy almost instantly if they were like, "Hey, by the way, we have uh, Smash sixty four, we have Melee, we have Brawl. It's all available now." Oh my god, on Smash All Stars! Play it online. Oh my god, yeah, that yeah. would sell. Well, play it, play That's, it online, that is way, to be clear. That is controller. exactly what they did with Street Fighter one, two, yeah. and three. Right. They were like, yeah. every game is here, and they all have online play now, even though they didn't before. I, like, well, there I is precedence for this. Like, the people who are like, they'll never do that. It's too much. There are other companies yeah. who have literally <laughs> done that. It. And Making it's, money as a result. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's fucking complaining about pirating Street Fighter 2, like, because they don't need yeah. to, because you could just buy the game and you can play it online. It's crazy. I would go play like, all of those online again. I would play 64 online. I would yeah, play dude. Like, you know, who I'm wouldn't? It was like somewhat passable. I mean, I would, l- I would let's take it games. back to 1999, dude. I would not like, play Brawl. It's well, brawl. okay, I would, but yeah, that's just me. But no, but, uh, <laughs> but pi- piracy <laughs> is a service problem. Is what I want to get that out. Yeah. Like yeah. overwhelmingly, yeah. if if you don't know that, then you're very uninformed or willfully ignorant because that is all piracy is. It's the same reason there are so many fewer people um, rampantly pirating movies and music. Because it's easy mm-hmm. to spend a dollar and get a song now. But in 1999, it was impossible. So it is it is an indicator that your audience wants to give you money and <laughs> you're not allowing them to give you money conveniently when they want to. And then you're taking it a step further by fucking them in the ass and suing them just because you're not allowing them to give you their money? It's insane to me that these companies are this disconnected in 2020. It's fucking insane. It, it's frustrating because like you've got the Sonic Mania... Uh, uh, precedent you've got the Mega Man X Street Fighter precedent oh, and yeah. then like even yeah right what a good fucking game that they scooped up and then and breathed a little bit of legal life into and then like it, even in the modern day like uh, King of Fighters uh, Samurai Showdown uh, those had mods for GGPO and then uh, uh, what's their face uh, uh, Namco or whoever whoever makes the, the King of Fighters games was like why don't you just like make it and we'll release it <laughs> or, or, uh, to can, you, can you imagine nintendo <laughs> like i i don't physically no i i can imagine them making money as a result but all, all you'd have to do is call up i assume dan salvato and be like hey can can we pay you for slippy we will make more money <laughs> it would be so easy but this would be yeah this would be the same thing as as them reaching out to you and saying hey we love your ultimate frame data site even though we don't care about frame data or having people like have access to it but we'd love <laughs> uh... to incorporate Okay, I think there's app. an important line there. I think there's an important line there. Okay, because no, there isn't. no, no, there is because 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 for for something like UFD, it's exclusively competitive, right? And I think they yeah. believe no. they believe. <laughs> well, okay, they it's pretty close, but they they it's believe they believe that it's detrimental to their IP to have like that competitive focus, which is stupid as fuck and an entirely different conversation. But let's just say for the sake of argument that they're right and that is the right way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. releasing melee with online play is not something that would only focus on the competitive side. We would obviously have a focus focus and would have right. that benefit. No, that's like, that's going to print money from like everyone. That's exactly. Like, everyone 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 it. Exactly. Everyone liked it. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone loved melee. It's, it's a beloved game. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know about the competitive side of it. Um, so, so yes, I, I think there's a very large difference between a product like that. And, 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 and so yeah. while slippy is intended to be competitive, what that would effectively do is enable them to have an extra feature set and sales sales point. Right. You know what I mean? That would work mm-hmm. for casuals. Casuals would still be able to play on the slippy technology online. And then suddenly like, whoa, this game would have really good net play. Like that's so wild, you know? Yeah. Um, God, I just can't believe how stupid they are. It's well, I, yeah, I don't, hopefully they look at something like 3d all stars and they, mm-hmm. cause I think the tons of people bought that game and then people, people yeah. bought it and then complained about it. And then now they've even like they've patched that a little bit, right? Three D like, All Stars. Yeah, Mario Three D All Stars. Oh, That's I don't, I don't even know what that is. It's got Mario sixty four, Super Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy. All oh, in one yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. All in one on the Switch. And when they released it, they did not have GameCube, well, not native GameCube controller support, which is incredibly stupid. But they've already patched that in. Mm-hmm. So maybe on the success of that game, they keep looking for other franchises. I mean, they could do that to Metroid. They could do that to. Earth the franchise, the they could do that to like anything. But like, and don't, everybody would buy it. Don't you think? Yeah. Wouldn't you think that the first one they would do would be the Smash Brothers franchise? Like, I just don't yeah. understand. Like, <laughs> is there some technical <laughs> thing about it that I don't? Because like that game, like you no. said multiple times, it, it fucking prints money. If they can do it with it Mario, does. why the fuck wouldn't they do it with Smash Bros? 
I don't understand why were, we're not buried smart, under an avalanche of Smash re releases. Yeah. Well, we would, and that's what that brings me back to what I said about skins and everything in Ultimate. That's even that's even easier because they already have skins there. But you could do that if they really wanted to go way over the top. They could have Smash sixty four melee ball whatever and then new skins and new, new skins for 64 and weird things if they really wanted to but that's that's effort they could just port the game over up res it lately and be done and people Call, still buy it like yeah and, and i think yeah. i think you've got a point as far as that making money but i do also think there is um an integrity of the ip element to what you're talking about because there are certainly games where there's just so many skins and different things like by the end sure. of street fighter 4 as much as i think they could have just kept printing skins and printing money like, as much as the, you wish they had. And I definitely <laughs> wish they had, because, yeah, the yeah. game could have made them so much money, which would have been great for the community. But also, by the end of the game, like, fucking Ryu is wearing, like, a fucking weird furry costume, and, like, somebody's dressed up like a turtle. Furry wolf. And, and yeah. the... And the right. which, is, yeah, which is fine, yeah. but, like, I do think, especially for someone like Nintendo, they would have a bigger issue, potentially, with, like, their characters getting increasingly, increasingly, like, driven away from the original design intent. So I do think that's mm. an important line, but again, regardless, like you said, they could not do that We're at all and just port well, it. <laughs> so I just again. don't understand like what they did with Mario. Mario has like the the builder alt, and then he's got like the wedding alt, or whatever. And like those are mm. those are huge, massive changes. And then like every other character is like, oh, we tinted him slightly green. <laughs> now yeah. his pants are blue. <laughs> well, but doesn't Mario have those those costumes in his games? You yeah, know, right? yeah, yeah, but. That's like that's asset what I'm saying, but they, they gave, power Yeah, they gave care to that. They actually ah, cared to do something. I got about you. I got that. you. And yeah, a lot of other ones are like, "Ooh, look, a, a slightly bluer Marth." It just, <laughs> well, Marth know. is particularly bad. He's got—I forget which two it is, but there's yeah, there's the one that's default, and then there's another one that is like ninety-five percent <laughs> the exact same color. Like yeah. I can't tell the difference between them at his, first glance. His tiara is a little bit shinier. It's—I think one yeah. is like a, the gold is a little bit more yellow, and one yep. the boots are a little bit less brown, and that's yeah. literally it. Like it's that that's shit's pretty, crazy. That shaft bad, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, fuck you, Nintendo. Hashtag free melee. Um, check out the hashtag free melee Twitter tweet hashy tag on the tweeters because um, the shit's stupid. It's fucking stupid. Did, did you play sixty four? Did you play Smash sixty four? Like when it came Hell out? Oh yeah, I played it when it came out. I didn't know about the competitive scene or anything. I was gonna I mean, say like since we're since we're all old, we could talk about like I pre ordered Smash sixty four. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't have a wallet in like, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, well, I mean, I, was, <laughs> I drove my grandkid over to pre order it. And I, was like, okay. oh, no, I, I had I had money from cutting grass and doing whatever in the neighborhood that kind of wow. stuff. But like, yeah, I, I, I drove. I, I, had not drive, I had my dad drive. I saved up um, my uh, my first communion money to buy a Sega Genesis. That was my first like oh, yeah. giant purchase i said like it was like that in christmas and i was like i'm gonna buy a sega genesis now no nah, man uh um, santa claus hooked me up i didn't have to i didn't have to work there's no physical labor involved and i didn't have to be smart and plan my money i was just like very fortunate santa claus was what a gifted thing what a yeah. yeah what a fortunate upbringing you had um <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. The younger generation is too soft is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. Um yeah, I don't know, man. I uh I, I think I think I would really probably not play 64 very much, to be honest with you, if they really list it. I, I think it's a fun game, but like playing to me, Smash 64 is a lot like Street Fighter One, where it's like it's neat, it's novel. It's so- Janky. But it, yeah, it's so <laughs> jank. yeah. Like I, I don't think I would ever play. I, I would play everything. Well, actually, wait a minute. I'd probably play. Yes, I would play Smash sixty four more than I played Smash four. <laughs> I would definitely, I would definitely play that more Sad. than Smash four. I was just uh, assuming they wouldn't even release Smash four on it because like they didn't do every mistake. Mario game with Mario Bros. Yeah, yeah maybe it's Smash too new. Like, the last three. Yeah, yeah, that could that could be. Um, and cut into the sales, you know, all those sales. Of all those Wii U sales, baby. <laughs> Best selling console of all time. I like my Wii U. I bet you do. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's hateful. The Wii U was, was <laughs> it had so much potential. I like the idea of asymmetrical game design. This is my, that's, that's they my really just messed up. Like, I like the, the idea of asymmetrical game design. It was terrible. Yes. People didn't know if it was like an add-on to the Wii. They didn't know what it was. It was confusing yes. to like general people. I think that was terrible. But I think at least their... it's not the new Xbox. 
What? I don't okay. even know what the fuck it's called. No, wait a minute. Xbox Let's do One why, Series. Why Xbox. is anyone excited about this console generation right now? I don't understand. X There's One no games. Series There's box. no good games. Why does anyone care? Because they're faster. I, I, I get it because I can play. I can play a bunch of the games that I kind of missed out on on the last. Yeah, year. So I did get like a PS5, but so I'm playing a bunch of PS4 stuff that I didn't play. By my own neglect, like I had a PS4 and it kind of went mm-hmm. by the wayside because I played too much Smash and don't have time for other games. So I feel that I eventually sold it, but now I'm going back and playing those games and it's kind of great. I'm I'm really excited. Are you going to live stream Persona Five Royal? No, I'm not. Playing <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> have you decided which girl you're going to romance? Oh my I god! I did. I did tweet out and say that I have that <laughs> game and now it's, I have it and own it for free and clear and will not play it. A A two hat. We have to. <laughs> We have to strap him to a chair and get him to play the the pigeon dating simulator. Hot to full boyfriend. <laughs> hot to full. Where you're boyfriend. the only hot to full boyfriend. You're the only girl at the all pigeon uh, high school. <laughs> we have. <laughs> well, this is an excellent well, segue uh, into. Uh, I think Lex has a, a mini yeah, segment yeah. for us. Actually, okay. So, so in in the spirit is this of fairness, the ambush. Is this yes. The ambush? <laughs> We're yes, talking it about is. An ambush. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, in in the spirit of fairness, I didn't I didn't finish the game, so like that's I, okay I as long as I'm everyone like, had a good time. I think I'm a, well. <laughs> I think I got about sixty percent of the way through. Uh, it's okay. So I, I played this game uh, yesterday and and today. It's it's a game that deals a lot with uh, the morality of war and uh, uh, taking uh, prisoners of war and um, like like the mistreatment. There's there's war crimes involved. I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty interesting how like by the end of the game, by the halfway point of the game, you're by the twenty percent mark. You're definitely a war criminal. But uh, yeah. and even though there's like choice in the game, they don't. It's all superficial, and I think that that's like a really striking anti-war sentiment uh, that they managed to get into uh, boob wars, big breasts <laughs> versus flat chests. <laughs> uh, you know, I can say fairly, the music is, that is not that bad. Is that really the subtitle? <laughs> Do, yes. Why? <laughs> you think I made that up? Boob wars, big breasts, big versus, breasts versus flat, flat chests. Chest. Yep. Um, so what are what are the, the strategical advantages bad. and disadvantages of each side? Like what are they what are they good and bad? It's it's <laughs> funny that you should ask. So so <laughs> I wasn't prepared for the for the full gameplay because it opens up with a sex scene. I I had of anticipated course, that. Of course, of course. Um, there's like a card game in it, right? So you draw five cards, and the opponent draws five cards, and the opponent is always one of the generals for either the the big breast or the flat chest army, and like. You can play as many cards from your hand as you'd like for the attack phase, and then you can play as many cards in, from your hand as you'd like for the defense phase. And every phase, you draw two cards. It has been my experience, and it, it is my firm belief and suspicion, that they actually programmed the different characters to have different battle strategies. Because the, the big rested characters, they, they, would like, they would leverage their higher base HP totals into like weaker attacks and higher defenses and and the, the flat chested ones more agile no they were like they, they, they were like uh, glass cannons but yeah okay <laughs> they have less health. it was so weird <laughs> <laughs> I, in... <laughs> what is what is uh, the like... actual what is the actual storyline of this Travis okay, so it, is none. There is it takes place. <laughs> it takes place in uh, the twenty second century, uh, the the not too distant future. So, like, you're um, there's some some virus or something that uh, takes all of the world's women and forces them either into a cup or e cup breasts. <laughs> no, and of course. <laughs> That's even even for lazy writing. That's like it would have <laughs> it would have been it would have been less ridiculous to me if they were just like everybody knows there's only two kinds of boobs in the world. That would have been like no. less ridiculous. But the fact that they like they're like guys, it they're was slower, man. It was the virus. The virus <laughs> the changed virus. everyone's boobs. Much better sizes. or worse than uh, does it just uh, if you get the virus does it just pop you into one boob size or is this like people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like and everybody then, reproduced. Yeah. There aren't like some C cups that are left from the previous generation, like no, boomer. No, they're all gone. Boomer C cups. They really did... old ones. Okay. Really old yeah. ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. So, 
So, of course, the uh, the difference in bust size led to uh, strong sentiments from both the, the flat-chested and the large-breasted. And so, like, they, they formed into countries. They're, they're like two warring factions in one neutral zone, one very small island nation of neutral people. Um, and so the, the, they, they start a war, and there's, like, some weird hostility between the big and small breast sizes where, like, the small-breasted women call the big-breasted women cow otters, and and the big-breasted women say that small-breasted women don't have breasts or hearts. Are there are is, there oh. are there are there small boob people who mm-hmm. had big boobs, but then they got the virus and became small boobs? I have to assume they they did not. So cover then, are that there like the, weird double the agents where 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 no they, double agents? Loyalty everybody's, is very from, well, Everybody's okay. wearing their cards on their chest. <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so, so you play as an agent from the neutral zone, and you are an errorist, which is a uh, an arrow-rist. It, it, it's a reductive uh, portmanteau of uh, terrorist and erotic, of oh course. Oh, so, God. So your goal <laughs> is to Jesus seduce the, the queens of both armies. Because there's no dudes. To bring peace. There's no dudes? Do what? Or there's, there's plenty of dudes, but but they're matriarchal societies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I seduced the the large breasted uh, commander, not the queen, for an in, and that's the point where I had, I was like, I really just can't be playing this game anymore. This is this is awful. <laughs> that was what it took was seducing well, the queen. You, no, I didn't get to the queen. I, I seduced the uh, the her her ace commander, and so like you you play the card battle game, which is a, it's an uh, analogy for like doing combat. And if you win, then like you you bring them over to your cause, and you do that by having sex with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the war crime. <laughs> oh. Uh, overall, I'm going to give it zero stars. I'm going to say probably, probably don't play this game for your first visual novel. I do think it's, <laughs> I think it's interesting that it's a visual novel with like a combat engine and like zero it's stars, almost, like zero? zero stars, no the redeeming qualities. Was, the music wasn't that bad. Like, <laughs> okay. I'll give it one star for the music. Uh, like the tracks oh, were maybe like three no. minutes long, but they didn't, they didn't grade or get annoying. Oh, uh, the main character doesn't have voice acting, but all of the women, of course, are voice acted. So I don't know if you've ever seen any any Japanese pornography. A2. Will. Never, never. No, no, not once. Never. <laughs> <laughs> it, but uh, it's hard to yeah. see it because it's all like blurred out. Ah, shit. I, I mean, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, see, see, <clears throat> uh, but, but yeah, just just don't don't play this game for your first visual novel, Will. Or or A two. I, I assume you haven't played any visual novels A two. That that was kind of no. callous of me. Yeah. There's <laughs> other ones you might like. <laughs> Not this one. Oh Alex. So that's yeah, I'll well, I'll give you a proper summary once I've once I finish the game. I'll that's, just watch the I'll watch the playthrough when when we'll the play let's it. play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or coming to a Twitch stream near you. <laughs> oh man. Um well, thank you, Alex, for yeah. that lovely sub segment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I, playing uh, erotic games, so you don't have to. I, once again, Alex, you have <laughs> somehow managed to get me, of all people, to be speechless. I, I do not. Um, <laughs> I do not have a thought in my brain. My slate, my slate has been wiped completely clean. There is nothing but a void of of shame and disappointment <laughs> that remains. So, so A2, knowing now that this game exists, does that make you more or less likely to appreciate Persona 5 Royal? <laughs> <laughs> Probably right where it was before. Pretty Oh well, that's pretty good. Yeah. I don't think we it's taken those. away. It has not taken anything away from Persona. Hell yeah. A2, what Maybe. would you say if you <laughs> knew there was a character in Persona who was just a giant penis <laughs> with a mouth and arms and legs? It's not a character, it's a it's an enemy combatant. Okay, for, first A2. I just want you I want to be sure that you know that I am not joking and that that's a real thing. Are it's a monster. Heard that, yeah. Are you still with me? Okay. <laughs> the other thing is that that character's name is Mara, which 
Yeah. I didn't know was, I assume, what the Mara in the St. Louis Smash <laughs> scene is named after. Yeah. And then I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that for the longest time either. I had no idea. Yes. And then, yeah, somebody brought it up. Or, I don't know. It hit me like a ton of bricks, podcast, dude. Like early on, or what? I, thought I think we did mention it. Point. I think we, yeah. yeah, that might have been. It was. I think at some point, Lex was trying to get me to play one of his weird, shitty, creepy. They're not that bad. I'm not trying to get anime you to play games. <laughs> I just, just, I just believe in it. separating my my masturbation from my game playing. <laughs> I'm a simple man, and I don't need to join those two things together. I, I think well, I can enjoy them both they, perfectly fine in separate <laughs> in separate instances. I don't know what I gain from, from homogenizing them. Like, like, if every time I jacked off, I had to do so it fun. to the rhythm of, like, an ice climber's chain grab, I don't think that... <laughs> I don't think that would give me that with, like, rhythm games. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I, games. I don't think I would get a whole, whole lot more out of that. Pursuit. Like, or like if, if whenever, whenever Joker comboed me in smash ultimate, if I like got a boner, that wouldn't be conducive to me playing the game. It would just be inconvenient. And I would rather that happened at separate times. <laughs> If you're having an issue where you're getting hard whenever you're getting Joker comboed, no, I'm uh, not. That's my point. I, oh, I, that's how I feel that. about. Okay, that's good. how I Me feel neither. about boob wars or whatever. Like I don't understand like the need to combine so, those things. So I was thinking critically about boob wars, and <laughs> <laughs> and I and I thought this game, the plot seems to be progressing pretty quickly. And then I realized it's pro- even though the total runtime, the total content is only probably about two hours, it's it's likely meant to be played over multiple sessions. Wow. So do you just like play jerk off and then like forget until you're in, in another horny haze and then then you load the game back up? I think, also, I think, I I think want the you goal to- is like when you play it, you want to play like as long as you can until you think that you're you're about to be done playing. And then you uh-huh. kind of wait a second and you keep playing. And then, and then, like again, when you think you're about to be done playing, you wait a second and you keep playing, and so that way, when you're finally done playing Boob Wars, you're like really, really done, like way more finished than you would have been <laughs> if you had finished the first time you thought you were going to finish. And that's why it takes you usually a, a week or so to finish Skyrim, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to, you've got to make sure to, um, gotta make it last. Yeah, <laughs> you got that time to yourself. Yeah, treat yourself. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, this brings me to my next question. So, A2, when you're making your resin buttons <laughs> at A2 yeah. Resin, um, yeah. do, you, do you take, like, custom orders? I, I have, like, a little bit here and there just as I'm kind of getting started, but um, quickly realizing that it's much easier to just, like, churn out a whole bunch mm-hmm. and list them up for sale on Etsy or something like that rather than the, the custom order because I just I don't know that I have the, the capacity yet kind of building up to that that makes sense you get your inventory and let people kind of pick from what you've already made yeah because if i if i want to custom make something and i make it and it's not exactly what you wanted if it's if it's generic enough i can i could probably sell it like somebody will want it but if you want like something really specific and then it doesn't turn out or there's like a bubble in it or whatever i'm just totally out that you know it's just that's i can't sell it nobody else gonna want it that kind of thing so i probably will more later on but yeah I, this is this was my uh covid boredom project or one of the covid boredom good, good projects. For you. that's a that's a good um, that's a good covid project it looks good yeah there's a it's like north gaming supply it's this guy that he sells a bunch of buttons and stuff or he did uh he just got like a new job or something and had to, had to mm. stop but he put up a series of videos showing like step by step and every little ingredient every little thing that he used oh, what a god and i watched it and i was like this is really cool and it's kind of accessible but there's like a cash outlay at first, obviously, like some of the stuff's not cheap to get started. But I was like, I want to try that. It'll be something to do. And then if I can, mm. my my initial goal was if I break even in a year, then that's good. Then that was a fun experiment kind of thing, whatever. Yeah. And even if you don't, I mean, it's probably not, you're not so deep in the hole, like as far as hobbies right. go. Yeah. And it's still fun doing it. Like I, I do, I think making the molds is, is painful, <laughs> but that's because I don't have like, six pristine sets of buttons that i can make molds from mm. all at once so like if i wanted to have four or five different molds for face buttons mm-hmm. i have to like create the first part let that cure for however long it takes take that out prep it create the second part let that cure for however long it takes take the whole thing apart and start over again rather than just like if i had four or five of them i would be done so i think the next step as money comes in is to buy more 
pristine brand new controller so that the next time I have to make molds because they eventually wear out, that'll make that a lot faster, a lot less painful. Do you think there's any market but for like different sizes of buttons? Like, you know how they have like different keycaps for like custom keyboards you could get? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, well, I, I've been looking into like the keyboard stuff specifically too because that's all like everything I have now sort of plays into that as well. And people pay crazy money for uh, keyboards. And yeah, keycaps. the keyboard keycaps for like weird escape keys are really big. Um, or you could make like yeah, uh, keyboard- like maybe an A button that was a little longer than most A buttons with like a flared base. That could be something people might go for because you don't want it to get lost once you slotted it in (laughs) yeah yeah that way it's easier to pull out it can't go in too far yeah Yeah, that's important yeah Um, yeah yeah Yeah, no you could probably make bank doing keyboard buttons i bet that's that's probably way more of a practical lucrative business model i think it is yeah there are people selling like individual (laughs) buttons for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks and that's just kind of insane so i will eventually probably explore (laughs) explore that because that sounds wild (laughs) I think he's talking about literal keycaps. Well, I know what he's talking he, about. No, I, no, I, I am. I am also talking about keycaps, but I mean, I'm oh, also geez. talking about uh, you know just a nice dildo with a flared base. Okay, I think. I think you know that, that I just look. Just don't close the door on that a two. All right, like leave it. Maybe you know, a just jar. leave it open a little bit, just a smidge, just a crack, sure. just a few inches. Because if it's if it's open a little bit, you know, you might be able to slide right in there and fill that need in in the market. Uh, <laughs> are, are we going to talk about the invisible hand of the market now? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And how H2 is going to get elbow deep into the <laughs> into that share of the market. Do you have uh, a slogan for your store yet? <laughs> I do not have a slogan. No, I do not. Um, how, uh, I am working on the logo, though. Oh, so, okay. I That's know. exciting. The old official. So are you, you're still like kind of going ham, you're still working on it. I know you're still making buttons. I didn't know you were still trying to like grow the the business side more. Yeah, I, I just like the first time I went through, I had like just a single set of molds for pretty much every individual button or stick or whatever. And then I went through the pain of making like four or five or six of those molds now. So every time I, every time I go down there to, to cast resin or whatever in buttons, I can get four or five sets out. So it's a lot, <laughs> a lot better. More streamlined. And yeah, much more streamlined. And if there is something wrong, something goes wrong with one of them, it's not like a total waste. You know, it's like that was the other thing is that I kept trying new stuff because there's lots of cool things to do, like effects and different powders and whatevers. And so I would I would have like one thing that was this color. And if it didn't turn out well then you're so now at least I can try to focus and get more product out. Are you like on track, do you think, to hit your goal so far, or are you still just like way away from that? If uh, of like breaking even, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within a year, however long it's been, it's been yeah, a couple months. I think if, yeah, if I, um, <clears throat> if I really kind of buckle down, if I if I concentrate on it, and I, so right now I'm st- <laughs> I'm still playing around with things. I'm like, oh, what if I did this, or what if I bought some of this to try, and you know, whatever. Um, but if I if I kind of buckle down a little bit, I actually think I could recoup all that money by like January, February. So Shit. much faster. Than, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, if you look at some of the people that are selling like full sets and they're doing it on, on Etsy or whatever. So I sort of just followed that progression, which is amazing because like you print your shipping labels from there, you do what it's just the most convenient thing. Um, But people will buy full button sets for like 60 bucks and that's triggers, that's sticks, that's everything. Um, I'll probably start a little lower, maybe more like 50 or something like that. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if I've, I think I have like eight of those sets in the basement right now, like ready to go. So wow. 400. So I, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm not so surprised it's... that people do want to buy them, especially like with you knowing people in the local scene who are like into it. But I'm, I'm more surprised to be honest that you haven't seemed to have had any issues like being like discovered on Etsy. Like, do you just have it, enough like local networking or is like Etsy just got like a really the, good listing? Like, it's yeah. the weirdest thing. Yeah. So <clears throat> Etsy actually is, is totally ridiculous. They have like stats on everything. They have stats on where people came to your page from mm-hmm. how they got there. If it was from their algorithm suggesting that as a result, if it was this or that. And, uh, I, a lot of the St. Louis people on Twitter followed me and they were retweeting stuff out, which was incredibly helpful, especially at the beginning. But the vast majority of my sales are just people like everywhere. It's like, oh, New York, uh, Florida, Oregon, Texas, wherever. I like, are they just finding people. you on Etsy, do you think? Like, is that? Uh, yeah, some of them are. So Etsy is probably like. Etsy's like early half. YouTube, it sounds like. They have like a really good search setup, I guess. It's just, 
yeah it's like super like crafty kind of stuff or whatever so i think it just people are browsing that or maybe they're looking for other people and as soon as you search for like if you searched custom resin gamecube controller buttons like i would be on that search page somewhere like not mm-hmm. not too far down so also apparently if i guarantee free shipping they like bump you up in the in the search results which i'm already offering free shipping so I'll probably check that checkbox and get moved up but i feel like free shipping is such an easy life hack for sales because like if you have a button that you're selling for i don't know 20 bucks and they're like, yeah. oh, if you give free shipping, you could always just make the button cost however much it needed to to cover yeah, your cost. Yeah, it costs 20, 22 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it costs 22 dollars, but shipping is free. And it's just like, yeah, that's so like, why wouldn't it's, you do that? It's just a huge, <clears throat> it's a huge mental advantage. Like when, whenever I'm buying anything, when you get to the checkout and you're like, okay, I'm all ready to go, and you're like, oh, it's seven ninety eight shipping. You're like, ah, man. like you know, this is extra. Nobody likes that. Nowhere. Nowhere. They want to yeah. know. It's yeah, it's like tax or whatever. We have um, we have an online store at work where we sell like statues of Jesus fucking people in the butt or whatever. And like whenever people buy them, um, <laughs> Can you send me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you. I'll get you a link later. But it's like. <laughs> Sweet. It's like it was the same deal where I was like, like, why do we need to charge for shipping? And like, we have to fucking cover what the cost is, blah blah. I'm like, but like, don't you think that more people would just buy them if we just didn't do that, you know? And it's like, it's amazing how many people don't understand that. To me, like, people who don't yeah. shop, yeah, or like, or people. Um, it's been the same deal with me with um, like I've had people in my business apartment where they'll bitch about the fact that like, well, if we do this through PayPal or whatever, there's like a, you know, the processing fee is like three percent. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, but how many yeah, yeah. of these donations <laughs> do you think we would get or how many, you know, or whatever? How, how much of this do you think we would get if we didn't have it online? And they're just like, oh, I'm sure people would write a check. I'm like, no, they fucking wouldn't. No, <laughs> like, yeah. like, and it happens all the time. It's amazing to me, like, how stupid people are with regard to business and that sometimes. I'm like, I don't claim to be a genius, but, like, there's just some basic tenets that, like, it baffles me that people don't get. Another one that happened to me at work was we did this big fundraiser. And, uh, you know, it was a thing where you, I don't know, you did dumb shit and there's like a company who did all the dumb shit for you. Right. So this company comes in and they're like, Hey, we'll do this whole fundraiser. We'll do all the things. We have people that run it, blah, blah, blah. And the upfront cost is nothing. And we just take 50% of the profits. And I was like, wow, that sounds fucking fantastic. It's a fun, cool fundraiser. Everybody's going to like it. We don't have to do shit and we're good to go. And then all that happened when it, when it was over is everyone was like, Oh man, we made like $30,000, $30,000, but they but they took 50% of the profits. This is horse shit. We need to do it ourselves next year. And I'm just like, are you dense? Like, yeah. you, you understand that, like, we're, like, we don't have the people to run this. We could not do it as well. And they're like, but yeah, but they took 50%. Think about how much more money we could make. I'm like, no, no, no. 50%. Think about how much yeah. less money you would make because it would be shittier and no one would want to do it. And they're like, and they, but they just totally don't get that. That, that never ceases to amaze me. Like how, I don't know. I, I worked in sales for a couple of years, so I guess I have some experience, but I guess some people just don't think about it that way. I, I don't know. It's yeah. wild. And then like, they definitely take a cut. Like, so Etsy takes a cut, but mm-hmm. you can, you can go on Etsy right now and you can pay through PayPal or any major credit card or Apple pay or Google pay or what. So, and like, I just, I'm not going to be equipped to, to take all that. And I don't want to, Write a website mm-hmm. to like then deal yep. with people's credit card. Yeah, I'm just I'm not not doing. Yeah, they're they're getting a, a little chunk <laughs> for yeah. for their service. As I mean that as, makes sense as soon to as me. Somebody buys it, I click on that sale and say print label, and it prints like a <laughs> a little invoice to go in the box with it. It prints the actual like shipping label that I just like slap on the outside of the the envelope and send it away. So it's it's so easy that I don't I don't care that they're taking like a whatever percent. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's the right attitude. Good on you for being forward thinking, A2. Yeah, it's just, it's not something that I imagined <clears throat> doing, which is really weird because I was like, I just kind of wanted to try it. And then I realized like this is too much money to just oh, no, do something in. randomly. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess I'll be selling them and see. But yeah, I, I there's still so much more like, interesting stuff to do. There's like, I had a glow in the dark set of buttons and that was really cool, but I didn't sell that yet. So there's just there's like interesting things to do and people seem to especially like the GameCube controller is so easy to open that people are able to do that on their own. I did actually buy a PS5 controller and the new new mm-hmm. Xbox controller so that I could eventually do those, but apparently taking those apart is is like a major pain. So that may oh, be no. like swap buttons in and then sell the yeah. whole build. Yeah. Are they are they're that much worse cuz I always thought even the GameCube ones they're were pretty terrible. That's weird because yeah, I've only terrible. taken apart two controllers. I'm not super great at the GameCube one. I had Hylian do mine last time I needed to because 
he's just more familiar with it. But I, I did it like a million years ago, and I didn't think it was awful. But then I've also done a PS2 controller, and I thought that was pretty easy. I swapped out a bunch of shit on those back in the yeah. day. So like, it's weird to me the new ones. Like, is it just screw types, or is it like the way things are? Yeah, a lot of them internally? don't even have visible screws, so you have to like use a little spudger or something, whatever, to oh, like kind of not break that. something. And yeah. yeah, and then once you get in there, it's just like there's so many extra wires and and boards and and whatever. Especially like the PlayStation Five has that the triggers like fight you. I mean, it has like resistive feedback or whatever, which is actually really crazy. I don't know if you've. If you oh, I didn't know about that. that. That's interesting. I oh, so I, I'm yeah, aware. They, they have a little like demo. Their Astros Playroom is their demo, but it like does a great job of just showing off what the controller can do. But it's like there's a little thing. It's right at the beginning. They make you do stuff with the controller so you can kind of see. And it was like, oh, pull down on the triggers, and I pulled. And I was like, I don't understand. It's not doing anything on the screen. It's not interesting. I don't know. But it was only about like half travel because they had something fighting. There's like a little screw that drives a little like wedge up there to stop you. So then you pull harder and you like snap through that zone and that's less resistive on the other side. So they've created like a, a break point in the middle that you have to push through and they can adjust where that is or how much tension it has. So they were saying for like first person shooters, every gun will like feel different. It'll feel like an actual trigger that you're pulling and clicking through. So oh, wait, all it, it actually it's clicks like, and like snaps through yeah. at a point. Yeah. 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 That, oh, I don't know how I feel it's, about that. Like, it's I feel wild. Like, it's it's really interesting. Is it? I mean, is it akin to like the GameCube controller shoulder buttons, where they've got like the final button at the bottom? They could kind of make it feel like that, but you could also they can do that at any any distance up or down the the travel of the button, the travel of the trigger. Yeah, that's got to be a pain in the ass to take apart. Holy fucking shit! Yeah, there's yeah. mechanical parts inside of it. Yeah, that's got to be crazy. But like, they also all have like microphones in them now. They've all got you know. Motion sensing. They all have. Why the fuck do they have microphones rumble, in the controller? Like, Is that, people can't be stuff. people can't be fucked to get a USB headset. It's got to be. In You've never wanted to just lean into your of... controller and whisper <laughs> to it. It does on the. <laughs> it does make you blow into the controller. At the point. That's. So. Funny. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah, blow yeah. into the oh, controller. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the little like Astro Bot like jumps on some like floating iceberg or whatever, and it has a has a little sail. And you're supposed to blow into the controller, and then that blows the sail, and you move along. I don't know what gaming is anymore. You, I think it's it's incredibly fun. It really that. is. Like it's 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 inter- It's supposed to be like uh, a little tech demo, but it's it's very fun and interesting. I just, I just, I feel like that to me. It's like <laughs> it's like VR or something. Where like I'm not saying I've never had fun fucking around in VR, but like to me, VR is not even gaming. It's like its own thing. It'd be like if you told me like painting and photoshop was gaming like i understand <laughs> that, that it can be fun <laughs> yeah but it's just not the same thing like uh, uh, the element of uh dexterity that that isn't checked because you're like yeah blowing into a controller or like looking around like i i feel like that all needs like a different name like we need to call it something else like 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 maiming or i, I don't know like just no. some some weird i don't know man it just feels odd to me that there's the future is now, old man. Uh, it kind of, I mean, it kind of is though. It's kind of at that point because I, I do think that's a pretty inventive thing to do. And you know how, like the Nintendo with the Joy Cons, they were like, oh, and then you play the game and you turn the Joy Con sideways, and you're supposed to be able to feel how many like marbles mm-hmm. are in it, like whatever. The PS5 haptic feedbacks are better than that, hands down, by a lot better than that because they have something similar in the little demo. So it's kind of weird because it's like they've they've sort of tackled a little bit of what Nintendo normally does with, hey, guys, we've got this weirdo gimmick now. But it kind of ties in better into the games. I don't know. It's it's very interesting. As he walks across like different services, it feels different in the controller, like feels a lot different. That's uh, man. I don't know. That's weird. I, I think the 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 I'll, I'll cross the bridge here a little bit. Um, I think the best newfangled weird thing that I thought was dumb and then actually thought was cool once I realized it was the way that um, like the Switch and Breath of the Wild does the FPS style controls where you can just tilt, tilt the controller and use the gyro. Oh, yeah. um, they didn't invent that there. That was in uh, Wind Waker HD. Sure, yeah, I know it's it's been around. Okay. That was the first time I experienced it though, so okay. that, that's what I associate it with, but yeah. Um, point being, um, I have always hated as a, um, cool Mm -hmm. member of the PC gaming master race. I hate 
playing FPS is on a on a pad. It's 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 insane. We've already had this conversation. We know this, but um, that is so much better to me. That is so much more intuitive and more like a mouse. Um, I would still never want it over a mouse, but I find it playable. Whereas, like, if they <clears> didn't <throat> have that feature in the game, I just wouldn't play it. Like, <laughs> I just I just I just wouldn't play it at all. Um, so yeah, maybe there's some element of this new shit that I'll feel that way about, but as it sounds to me right now, I'm just like, I don't know. I, I feel the same way about like rumble. I mean, I thought it was cool when I was 12 and the controller rumbled because I got shot in star Fox. But then at the end of the day, it's like, I don't want my controller to fight me because I want to play the game. Like it's, I don't, uh, it, it's weird though, because I, I watched a lot of, I did watch a lot of videos cause I was curious. I like read about the technology. And I wanted to see how people, so the, all the people that got it early, I watched those videos. They're like, Oh my God, it's crazy. It's doing this. It's doing that. And when I actually played it, I was, I was shocked. Like I thought it was more than what I had watched the people react to. So it, it was. It's. I'm not gonna say like, oh, I'll never be able to play games again any other way. But it's. It's. Sure. A, it, it's. It's interesting. It, it, I. I'm really curious to see what they do with it, and I think that's way more interesting than just, oh, it's a uh, another PS4, but it's uh, one number higher and uh, more powerful. Mm-hmm. I think I, I'm glad they went the extra mile to do something and did different. something weird. But yeah. like, okay, here, do you think that that weird thing is going to be like a part of every game meaningfully? Because I don't. I think there are going to be some games. And these, no. These, yeah, these are like the VR games or whatever the, the gaming that isn't gaming name is that we can't think of. Like, there are going to be games like that where it's cool. And don't get me wrong, I like like Dear Esther or some weird story games that don't have real gameplay. I do like those games. I'm not saying I don't enjoy them or that you can't enjoy them, but to me, that's like a very different thing. And like, if I'm playing Modern Warfare, I think you're an insane, crazy person for wanting like each gun to have a different feeling trigger. Because like, you don't play Modern Warfare. Well, I guess you could play Modern Warfare for the story, but what the fuck are you doing? Like, you don't like... <laughs> yeah, like that... Yeah. There's no... So like, you play those games to be competitive or to to play with your friends and like... Mm. That to me is just something that's in the way of me playing the game, and I I actively I don't like, want it. I, you know, it's probably a little more, probably like a little more immersive. And I bet if you like played it and you just had that, and then you went to a different, you played on a different console or something, and it didn't have that, I'd be like, wow, I'm so much better it. because the controller isn't fighting well, me while I play this game any longer. I don't know. Like, I think I think <laughs> it has about Rumble and Smash. In like, in like racing games and that kind of stuff. Like I think it has applications there that are really cool. Like how hard the brake is fighting you for, I'm not getting into car stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a, like, that's actually a really good example though. I mean, I, I think there's a lot more reason for that to be a part of the real game and racing game. than yeah. there would be in others. I actually do agree with that. That makes sense. Yeah. But I also think in that same vein, I think VR is amazing for something like uh, flight sims or probably mm-hmm. racing yep. games there too, except that I, yep. that's weird. Cause I'll like, give you those. You, you, You'd almost need to be in like one of those seats that like tilts back to give you the acceleration or whatever. Like, I, I think that's an amazing kind of thing, and I would love for that to happen. But that's well, but you know, you know why I think that's are... better is because you're not moving yourself. I think that's why VR is right. so weird and other things is because you have the expectation that you're going to be able to move around. But if you're right. in a car in a VR game, you're not expecting to be able to move. So like that yeah, immediately. That immediately like helps with that um, suspension of disbelief issue that you have, where yeah. you're not you're not running into your boundaries because your expectation is that you will sit. Um, well, and then yeah. if you're if you're racing around a racetrack, you you want to look. You're looking out the side window at a certain point during mm-hmm. the corner, and you can't really do that in a traditional. So I think VR is like amazing for that too. Yeah, that, right? like, that's oh, a good I'm point. Looking, I'm looking forward for the next couple of turns, but they're off to my left. I have no way to do that on a on a console. Or mm-hmm. on a PC with a steering wheel or whatever. Yeah, I've so never been super into racing games, but that seems like just a way more practical use case than a lot of other genres. I would think, um, I would think Flight Sims too. You can yeah. kind of look behind you. You can look around. I think that would be pretty interesting. I'm not a believer for FPSs that, though, man. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I probably agree with that. <laughs> I don't, uh, God, God help <laughs> us if we ever get VR fighting games. That's when I will retire. I won't I be. That. I won't be seventy. Yeah, if they try and make me play a VR fighting game, I'm just gonna <laughs> leave. Did, Did you see, see VR uh, Smash so you can jump like 50 feet in the air? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the Black Mirror episode that's a VR fighting game? Uh, maybe. I've seen a couple Black Mirrors. Is that the one okay. where someone's in a body of a... No, no, that's that's something different. That's Love, Death, and Robots. I don't know if I've seen oh, the thing you're yeah. talking about. Oh, no, no. Yeah, watch the episode. Get back to me and tell me you wouldn't play it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see. 
Um, well, we are coming up on an hour here, and my computer hasn't crashed for the last 58 minutes, so Hell uh, yeah. I think this is as good of a stopping point as any. And uh, A2, is there anything you wanted to tell the world that you that you didn't get to tell them? Shout out to your I mom. Think so. No, <laughs> no. I mean, as as one of the like five listeners of this podcast, I feel like there's lots to weigh in on. But I just, we don't <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> I was well, talking was, as you dropped out to repair your computer for the third time. Lex and I were talking about a mutual uh, disrespect for mustard and cilantro, that sort yeah. of thing. Wow, yeah. I hate you both so There's much. Plenty, There's plenty to talk about. <laughs> I love both of those things. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's, like that's, soap. Well, that's because okay. To, I mean, you have the gene. That's that's real. I can't I yeah. can't knock that. There's a cilantro soap gene, and you're very unfortunate that your life is shit that you have that. <laughs> do you like Do you like horseradish, Will? Absolutely. You see, because we hate horseradish. I just, I don't like to taste it in my nose is the thing. We the collectors. Just, okay, now wait a minute. Now, I was trying to end this podcast and you're not letting me because here's the thing. Here's the thing <laughs> no, about, nope, nope, nope. Here's the thing about horseradish. Horseradish is like, it's like doing Lynx and Street Fighter. You have to have skill to eat horseradish. <laughs> no. It is. It is. I'm dead serious because if you eat it right, horseradish is not spicy. People are always like, it's spicy. It's not. It's a whole different thing. It's a, it's a weird air thing. It goes up in your nostrils. You have to position it properly in your mouth <laughs> so that it doesn't go into your air into your airway, into your nose. And you need to open your mouth so that whatever is gas is created from you eating it from that air comes out your mouth and not up into your nose. It's like when you okay, you know when you were a kid and you learned how to swim and you were like, ah, I hate going underwater because the water gets in my nose. <laughs> And then you have to learn that when you dive under the water, you have to blow air out of your nose so that the bubbles don't go in and only bubbles come out. That's like eating horseradish. If you think that about horseradish, you just suck at it. You're bad. You're a baddie. <laughs> You're dropping your links, you piece of shit. Go practice your combos. Eat eat in the horseradish training room and get back to me when I'm you put the gonna... time in. <laughs> Scrub. <laughs> Anyway, I have been Metal Music Man. <laughs> I've been Professor Lex. And A2 is here. Say a word, A2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A word, yeah. That, that was him. That was A2. Hell yeah. We will catch you guys next time when hopefully my computer doesn't implode 57,000 times. Uh, yeah, that's it. Bye, everybody. Bye, the internet. <laughs>